So I finally had a chance this weekend to do a bit of suspension reassembly on the RED124 project. Step one I decided was to install the new strut top mounts. I've had everything for this job sitting around for more than a year now. So really I had no excuse. So let's get started. It's a case of just uh, lifting it up from the bottom. It does only go in one way. Uh, one side of it has a flat side um, and the rest of it is round. So yes, it will only go in one way. Can't really screw this up unless you try. Because of the tight fit, um, I find that I have to rock these around to get them to sit in properly. Um, unless it goes in absolutely dead straight the first time, which is kind of hard when you're holding a camera at the same time. I do have to get myself another uh, tripod, I think, because this is getting all too hard. Um, just having the one high tripod and not having anything to use on the ground. I have to use a combination of uh, sockets and boxes and whatnot to actually get the camera to sit on an acceptable angle when I'm down low. So that's not really good especially how expensive the camera is and it's now getting covered in scratches and greasy fingerprints. Um, just be aware with these three studs on these mounts, even with the quarter inch ratchet set I have successfully snapped one off before. They seem to be ridiculously brittle for some reason. Um, and that was trying to do it up to specification, um, the torque specification. So I didn't even bother this time. Um, just doing it by hand and tight enough and that should do the job. This was actually the second attempt of installing this lower control arm. Um, you can get it in the first time uh, with some practice, but yeah, the first time I got it in, uh, the holes didn't line up and I couldn't be bothered messing around, so I just pulled it out and tried again. The second time it was perfect. The rear bolt just smacks straight in, as you can see here. And a little bit more fiddling later, I got the front one too bang in as well. Now I used my other car as the reference and I'm pretty sure this is how they were on this car. Um, if this is wrong I'm sure you'll let me know. And then it was a case of installing these uh, bump stops on the front struts. Um, I did use the old one as a reference so hopefully this is correct with the slot at the top. And I used pictures on the internet to make sure that gator on the top was the right way around as well. I wasn't 100% sure, but that's the best way and it doesn't fall down the strut. Then I just lifted the entire assembly up into the strut top mount. And then dropped on the top uh, mounting bracket that I had cleaned up somewhat. I'm not going to spend hours polishing things, that's just not me but I did get it looking better than it was. The struts do come with the new nuts and washers. Uh, what's not evident here, here is that I am actually angling the strut so that the whole thing is turning around. I'm not putting unnecessary wear on this new strut by just spinning the shaft and having the strut in a stationary position. Of course that's how the car is able to turn so it's not really going to hurt it, but why put extra stress on it. It was then time to mount my assembled uh, knuckles. What's not evident here is that I forgot to assemble it first and you can't really put the arm on the back of it if you've already got it attached to the strut so I did take it off and reassemble it with the arm on the rear. Now obviously I'm replacing all of the steering components. You're not going to have your tie rod dangling down the front there if you're not replacing it. Everything with the steering is getting replaced so that tie rod is going in the trash. I don't care where it's sitting at the moment, it's just waiting to get removed and thrown away. 
Um, obviously, if you were reusing that, you'd have a hell of a time trying to get that back up to connect to the uh, knuckle. So don't pay attention to that. Just pretend it's not there because it really isn't. It's just waiting to go in the bin. Uh, the final tightening of all of these bolts I did off camera. Um, technically you should be using new bolts on a lot of these. Uh, the struts do come with new bolts. Uh, just a handy tip there. With the um, spring compressor, especially when you're using new springs, I wrapped the surface with masking tape because I don't want to scratch my new springs. And that worked absolutely perfectly. There's no scratches whatsoever on these new springs. So that's made me happy. Um, getting this lower ball joint to slot into the uh, knuckle can be quite a pain in the ass. But once you've uh, spread the, the opening a bit with the screwdriver jammed in like I have there, um, it went in pretty easily, just turning it around back and forth. Uh, one thing I didn't mention or show in the video is that for some reason these ball joints are always rotated 180 degrees. Um, you do have to correct that because you've got no chance of correcting that once you've got it in the knuckle. So get that in the right position before you push it in and then you're fine to just drop that bolt straight in. Now be aware that I have put this bolt in the wrong way around. Um, originally it did come in from the left hand side. I don't know if that makes any difference or not. Um, I'm sure someone will tell me if it does. But it seems to work fine and it doesn't seem to be fouling on anything. Um, I reviewed the footage when I disassembled it and noticed the error of my ways. Uh, if it becomes a problem, I don't have an issue just removing it and flipping it around. And this is the uh, stop that uh, prevents abnormal noises apparently when you're at full lock. There's one on each side. So that's with the knuckle installed and the spring is no longer uh, with the spring compressor. It's just a case of uh, the final bits of assembly for today. Installing this brake shield that I cleaned up yesterday and gave it a bit of a uh, paint job. I cannot install the discs or the hubs. Uh, I still don't have my new bearings. They're still on their way to Australia. Uh, because this is now outside, I did soak that uh, stub axle with uh, water dispersing lubricant and wrapped it with plastic so it's not going to rust now. And also don't forget to reinstall the plastic cable clips into the struts, they don't come with the new struts. You just have to remove it from the old one. Fortunately mine did not break, it came out no problems at all. And this is just the ABS sensor being bolted in, or well, the cables being clipped in first. And that's just two bolts to lock that in. Now because of the heat and age of this car, the cables for the brake wear sensors and the ABS sensor, uh, there are grommets that lock into those plastic clips. Uh, they basically just fell to pieces. The cable itself is perfectly fine, but those grommets are what seat the cable tightly into those clips. That's obviously not going to work anymore, so I will be using high temperature cable uh, tyres to hold those in. And it will be necessary because it will not pass inspection if there's cables just dangling around there potentially causing an issue. So that will have to be done, and I'll do that later once I finish off in this area. That's the completed installation of the uh, ABS sensor. I haven't rebuilt the calipers yet. That's on my to-do list. No rush. I don't even have brake pads yet. I'm thinking of getting Akebono ceramic ones. Obviously they're not available in Australia, but I'll order them in and fit those later. All in all, I'm extremely pleased with today's progress and I'm bloody happy with the way this looks. But that's all I have time for today. Unfortunately, I have other pressing issues to deal with, so there'll be no more 124 activity this weekend. I'll try and get to the other side through the week. If not, it'll be next weekend.